Hi, this is Simply Jane. So we are here on our way to the shrine of Our Lady of Guidance. Imagine, I did not know that there is a church here in Ermita. I thought the churches here are Malati Church and then there are other churches I went to. But I never thought that there was a particular church called the Ermita Church. And by the way, there are jeepneys passing by. See, I actually dropped off on Ross Boulevard and then I chose one particular street and voila, this was the street that directly led me to the shrine of Our Lady of Guidance. Imagine how easily I was able to find the church when it was only last night I discovered about this particular church. I was even feeling bad because I said, Mama Mary, you didn't tell me. I was so excited last night because it was the only night I discovered that there is this the oldest extant image of Our Lady called Nuestra Señora de Guía here in Ermita. And I said, Mama Mary, you lead the way. I want to go there tomorrow. And yes, indeed, today is the day. And you know what day it is? Oh, I have... I'm having goosebumps, you know, it's the visitation of our Blessed Mother Mary. It's the feast day of Our Lady of the Visitation. It's May 31, 2022. See? And this shrine was originally established in 1606, the same year as the Augustinian Recollects came to the Philippines. You see? So this is the Porta Santa because we have just celebrated the 500th year of our faith in 2021 and 2022 is just a year after you see look at that i'm so glad because i'm a child of mary and this porta santa is actually specially made in honor of the blessed mother mary our lady of guidance you know guys I've been a child of Mary for such a long time and I'm so grateful that our Blessed Mother had been my guide. She has led the way in all the troubles that I have experienced in life. She has helped me through all the difficult times I've went through in life. And here I am, 2022, just a year after our 500th anniversary. After having taught catechism for 30 years, I am so grateful for this particular gift for our Blessed Mother Mary. There you are, Mama Mary. And I'm so grateful that you have given me this gift. You have visited me today. Thank you. May museum po dito. Oh, yeah. Ayan. Thank you, thank you. Ito po yung replica. Andito tayo, guys. Ito mo labi mo siya. Ayan guys. Napakaswerte natin na nakapasok po tayo dito. 
talagang dinay tayo. Nasa Senyora de Guia, pray for us. Ala, naiyak ako. <laughs> naiyak po ako. Ayan po, the chair was used by Pope John Paul II during the 1995 World Youth Day Mass in Pirino Grandstand. Ayan ang kanya mga mga clothes. Ang ganda. Ito po yung oldest na mga Mary. Bota Flores. Ayan. Yeah, National Historical Commission from Inang Maria by Barcelona and Estepa. Ito yung kanya mga... Mm -mm. Ang alam ko, isa doon sa crowns na yan, binigay ni Pope Paul VI pa. Na ngayon ay santo na rin. Tapos, ayan po, oh, kahit si Father pa Patrick Payton of the International Family uh, Rosary Crusade nakapag-preach at nakapag-pray ng rosary in the presence of Mama Mary Nuestra Senora de Guia Ayan guys So oldest ikukwento ko na lang po sa inyo yung history pero napakaswerte po natin na nakapunta po tayo dito. Ito po yung painting niya. O, oh, 1571 daw po. Premier, primera imahen. Tapos, dito tayo pinapunta ni Kuya sa likod. Ayan siya, guys. Ayan, ang likod. Tapos, filial homage. Mag-pray muna ako. Ayan o. Oh. Ito po yung history. Mga native Filipinos. Nasa pandan. Sa pandan o. Oh. Opo. Meron po siya isa pa mga replica. Tapos, ayan, ang clothes niya through the years. Ayan. Ayan, si Pope Paul VI. Ah, ginawaan siya ng metal. Opo. Metal clothes. Tapos, ayan. tatlo po ang naging crown niya kuya saan po yung pinakauna yung binigay po ni Paul the sixth yung last yung coronation niya po may mga sinauna niya po ayan ang natouch ko guys Hala guys, posible pa lang Little Brothers of Jesus yung mga tumulong sa akin makapunta dun sa museum. Sila pala yung custodians nito. Our Lady of Guidance is a 16th century image of the Blessed Virgin Mary depicted as the Immaculate Conception and widely venerated by Filipinos. The wooden black Madonna is is considered the oldest extant Marian statue in the Philippines. So it's located in Ermita, Manila, Philippines. Made of indigenous Molave, Vitex Cofasus wood, the statue stands about 50 centimeters or 20 inches tall and is characterized by dark skin, Asiatic features, and long brunette hair. It is often dressed in both a manto and a stylized tapis the indigenous wrap-around skirt of Filipino women. 
Among her regalia are a scepter, a ruler of jewels, offered by Archbishop of Manila, Rufino Cardinal Santos in 1960, and a gold crown bestowed by Pope Paul VI during his visit to Manila Cathedral on 16 May 1971. So let's go to its history. According to the Annals de Catedral de Manila, the crew of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi discovered a group of natives in what is now Ermita along the eastern shores of Manila Bay, worshipping a statue of a female figure. There are several theories of its origin as an animist tantris diwata, an East Asian statue due to her Chinese features. A Marian icon imported from nearby Portuguese Macau or due to its striking resemblance to the Santo Nino de Cebu, a relic of the 1521 Magellan expedition. This sacred statue had managed to survive the Islamic iconoclasm by the Sultanate of Brunei, a state that had invaded and colonized Manila. While its original purpose is debated, the image was later identified by missionaries as the Virgin Mary. Local folklore recounts the Spaniards witnessing natives venerating the statue in a pagan manner by placing or by placing it on a trunk surrounded by pandan plants. The pandan is a common food ingredient in the Indianized cultures of South and Southeast Asia to which it is endemic. The manner of worship of this Catholic icon is remembered in the placement of pandan leaves, real or imitation, surrounding the andas as one of its attributes. Don't get me wrong, guys. Catholics do not worship Mary. We know very well that we venerate her. And veneration is different from what we call worship or adoration, which is due to God and God alone. On May 19, 1571, the local sovereign Sulaiman III and Ramatanda ceded Kota Selurong as well as the Kingdom of Tondo to the Spanish Empire with Miguel Lopez de Legazpi who had arrived from Mexico consecrating the city to both Saint Pudenciana and Our Lady of Guidance. In 1578, Philip II of Spain issued a royal decree invoking Our Lady of Guidance to be sworn patroness of Manila. The statue was the first enshrined in Manila Cathedral inside the citadel of Intramuros until 1606 when the first shrine compound was built on the current site called La Ermita or the Hermitage because of a Mexican hermit who lived in the area. The shrine was originally made of bamboo, nipa, and mulave wood. It was later rebuilt in stone but suffered damage in an earthquake in 1810. The icon was first revered under the title of the Immaculate Conception. However, the Spanish explorers who first discovered her together with the native Filipinos who witnessed their wishes and supplications granted before the icon considered her as their mutual guide. When the image was later moved to Ermita Shrine from Intramuros, the power of the Ermita Shrine emitted lights at night or during storms. This light guided traveling ships and sailors in the darkness, and people named the icon Our Lady of Guidance. Ang ganda pala guys ang storya ng Ermita Church at saka Our Lady Nuestra Senora de Guia. Alam niyo ba guys na meron silang practice dito na Bota de Flores? Yun po ang protest ng mga ng kapitana ng Hermita noong ayaw ng katedral na ibalik yung imahe ng Our Lady of Guidance. So talagang gusto nilang kunin at ibalik sa Hermita. Kaya yun po ang ginawa nila. Pinagbabato nila ng mga bulaklak ang pinto ng katedral. At ayun, talagang ibinalik na nga po Itong imahe ng Our Lady of Guidance. During the Second World War, the statue was saved by the parish priest of Armita Church, Father Blas de Garnica and Justo Lopez. They hid the statue in a niche of the church's crypt. 
A few weeks before the Allies liberated Manila in February 1945, after the battle, Father Rogelio Bedonia, along with a chaplain and four soldiers of the United States Army, went to the obliterated shrine, retrieved the icon, and brought it to a safer place. Until the construction of a temporary chapel, the icon stayed in a private house on Taft Avenue in San Miguel de Mayumo and finally in Quiapo. The current shrine was built in 1947. Hope you learned something today. God bless you.